we bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, gracious Father, we thank you for this day, Father, that you have blessed us with as we gather here in this manner to celebrate the 2020 graduation cocktail, Father, for those of our children that will be leaving us this year. We want to pray, Father, that the almighty God of the almighty hand of God, Father, may rest upon each and every one of them, Father, so that they may be protected as they celebrate their day. How much can we ask from thee, Father? We also want, Father, to recognize the fact that the graduation season, on the one hand, is a day worth celebrating. On the other hand, mighty God, it is a day, Father, that may instill feelings of sadness to many of us who want to only ask for the peace of the risen Son of Man to rest in each and everyone's heart. We also want, Father, to send them with the declaration that the psalmist made in Psalms 23, verse 6, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow them all the days of their life. At this moment in time, Father, allow us to invoke the service of the Holy Spirit and the service of all guardian angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, Father, to cover us in their wings so that we may be preserved from forces from the kingdom of darkness. We want to pray, Father, that the love of God, the Father, and the sweet, comforting fellowship of the Holy Spirit may dwell in us all. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Mbeta. Grade 12 Blue, class of 2020. Are we ready to introduce ourselves? Better. is who are you i'm nobody so leave me alone all right everybody is somebody even a nobody yeah i think you're confused i am confused you don't even know who you are oh and i suppose you do follow me i will show you
I need your grace. Uh, me never relent. Uh, my love no get shame. Uh, no matter the case. Uh, but my music give me bass. Uh, my sweet, sweet bass. Uh, so my love no get shame. Uh, for you all day. Uh, Yeah. 
a Juana, a Anabela, a Maria, a Mingota, a Mecelua. Ay, a puta, yo te sigo un mes. the presence of our guest of honor, our managing director, our chief academic officer, the PTA chairperson, our head of school, deputy heads of school, our parents watching from home who unfortunately can't be here with us, our diligent teachers, and of course the reason we are here, the class of 2020, may I welcome you again to this year's farewell cocktail. As we continue with our program, allow me to introduce our school head teacher, Mrs. Siawanta, to give the opening speech. A round of applause for Mrs. Siawanta. The managing director, the chief academic officer, the PTA uh, executive members present, the school deputy head teachers, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good afternoon. Guest of honor, sir, foremost, thank you very much for accepting uh, our request to be with us this afternoon as we say our goodbye to the 2020 class. Thank you very much. Today, is a celebration of all that is good about our students, teachers, and the school at large. Boys and girls, it is wonderful to observe among the positive energy that comes with this graduation. We hope you will take this uh, energy into your examination rooms. You look awesome. Well done. On behalf of the company board of directors and school management, may I take this opportunity to welcome all of you to Rhodes Park School. Please feel at home. Guest of honor, sir, we should have been with the parents of these children and other family members, but because of COVID-19, we have asked the families to follow the live proceedings of this afternoon on Facebook. Dear parents, we thank you for supporting Rhodes Park School by bringing your children to our school, some of whom came uh, while well, they were in reception 13 or 14 years ago. Your children are now becoming young adults in society. Obviously, this is a process. They are in a process. Here, seated before us, with so many ideas of what they want to become in society. They want to become great people. It is our duty as families and educators to help them preserve the happiness and sense of accomplishment that accompanied their first exploration. To raise engaged and responsible young people who are confident in their abilities to adapt, persevere, and grow. Soon, as educators, we will be handing them over to you. Please do not be too busy for them. Create time to be with them and listen to their dreams and help them achieve 
these dreams. The transition period between now and the time they enter tertiary education is key because many who are not guided lose it at just that time. Please be with these children. This is the time that you need to be close to them. Create that time. We will usher them into the examination room and walk the journey with them until their last paper. Please take it up from there and let there be no gap. Boys and girls, I think we need to give a round of applause to our parents for this journey they've led us. Thank you. To my colleagues, the teaching staff, and support staff. Like any production behind the scenes, there's a huge commitment going into each lessons prepared and eagerness to be the very best staff or teacher that they can be. It is a privilege as a head teacher to work with such a team who have such skill set and expertise in education. Their dedication to educating the students in our school is enormous. Once again this year, we started with this number of students in January, and we are ending with the same number without any cases of expulsion. Tim, thank you for mentoring these young souls. Let us continue to walk with these children throughout their examination journey and hand them over to their parents after their last paper. When we do that, we can then relax and plan for the next group. To you, our special people uh, this afternoon, boys and girls, we are proud of you. Each one of you has worked very hard to realize the full potential. You have persevered and worked hard towards achieving your goals in a very determined manner. Each one of you have grown in a way that you should be proud of and are now ready to transition to a new exciting chapter in your lives. Here at Rhodes Park School, we endeavor to provide holistic education to our students and we are very confident that you are ready for that new chapter. We give you words of encouragement, we give you support, guidance throughout your stay here at Rhodes Park School. And these have sustained you both here at school and at home. But at the end of the day, you and you alone will decide what you want to become as you walk through those school gates with your results. Before you start your examinations, let me share just five tips for your examination, your preparedness for your examination. I wish you had your journals to write, but I'll share them with you during assembly next week on Monday. Number one, do not fall prey to comparisons. Remember, you are an individual. You are alone. You are unique, therefore, do not focus on other people's performances. Instead, optimize, optimize your own efforts. Number two, get adequate sleep before your examination. Six to eight hours of sleep before the paper is safe for you. Three. Make healthy life choices. Do not use any substance, thinking it will help you study better. No, it doesn't work. Substances, boys and girls, simply make you increase your anxiety, anxiety levels, and you mess up as you walk into that examination room. Four, before and after the examination, do not cram. Do not get into frantic last minute revisions, fattening the cow before it is slaughtered. That will simply 
lead you into confusion and give you more stress. Four, avoid analyzing the paper after you've written it. Leave it, focus on the next paper. The last one, which I think is very important, you need to talk. Talk about how you feel, especially if you feel anxious during examination period. Talk to your parents, talk to your friends, talk to your teachers, especially our learner support teachers. They'll be there waiting to listen to you and to give you the support that you need. In conclusion, boys and girls, the real power of creating and being responsible for your future is unlimited. You will hopefully experience enormous joy in creating this journey for yourself and enjoy the benefits thereafter. Of course, there will be challenges ahead and whenever you are determined to succeed, you will make the right choices for you. I encourage you to put all the energy, especially the energy that I saw here while you were dancing, put all your faith, your talent, and time to each opportunity that comes your way. Follow your dreams, follow your passion, believe in yourself, but remember, life is an endless process of self-discovery. Thank you very much, go well. May I now invite our managing director to come and talk to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, 12 Blue. Okay, yeah. Good afternoon, 12 Green. Yeah, slightly better. Good afternoon, 12 Yellow. Slightly better. Can I hear it? Good afternoon, 12 Red. Good afternoon. Much better. It's been an amazing year. The year that everyone's going to be talking about uh, for the rest of our lives. You guys are graduating in 2020. And everyone always say, oh, class of 2020. Oh, the ones who became doctors while they were in school. Earlier this year, when we had to close down the school on March 20, we had some very tough times, and we all looked at what was going to happen to, to us, for you guys as students, to us ourselves as people uh, operating the school, the parents as well, especially those watching from home. And we didn't know how things were going to go, but through a lot of hard work and resilience and taking care of each other, we've managed to make it this far. I can share with you that the graduation ceremony that we have every year around this time is one of my favorite, favorite days of the year. And there was a time when I wasn't sure if this year we were actually going to be able to have it because we didn't know how things were going to go. But here we are. It's the 24th of September, and everybody's ready for their exams, right? Everybody's thinking about what happens to us uh, next year, thinking about where we go and, what, and, what, and, and what, what, what our lives will be like. And for most of you who've been at Rhodes Park for several, several years, some of you came here in reception, so some came in maybe grade one, to five, uh, grade eight, grade 10 even, and Rhodes Park has become such a part of your life that as much as you're looking forward to the times to come, you're also wondering, how will I miss um, Rhodes Park and the things that I have done here? Rhodes Park has taken you all those places, places like a few national park, like Livingstone, South Africa. Sadly, you guys didn't get to go to Namibia this year, as is normally done in grade 12. But then this year has been a year of firsts. It's taken you to all the different places that you've visited. Um, on your times, all the places you've gone to play sports, all the things and experiences that you've had uh, with you, whether in class, outside of class, in the way that we try as Roadspark to give you a holistic education. 
And it has made you ready for what's to come. The type of um, higher education many of you will go into next year will be different from what was there before. The type of world that you will be living in uh, with this COVID-19 pandemic will be very different from what may have been before. But I want each and every one of you to have the confidence that we can make it. We have made it this far. And the fact that we're literally sitting here uh, today celebrating in this very interesting, strange way, where we're here without our friends and, and parents, um, people making comments on Facebook. I hope I don't have something in my teeth on Facebook. So we're here today, and that shows us that we can really uh, make it. I wanted to thank my parents, the parents that are, you know, joining us live. Um, it's been such a sacrifice for you to be able to take your child through to this point of almost completion here at Rhodes Park School. A leading private school, we offer the best that we can, and one of the things that makes us successful is the way that we push in terms of financial matters. And that sometimes is not something that parents may really uh, feel positively about. But the reason we do that is to, to make the school um, succeed financially. And we really appreciate it when parents are able to uh, give the best that they can to their children. And we always undertake to give the best that we can to your children. We are going into the next, this century um, under a new energy that's been provided to us by one of the new members that has joined our team. His name is Mr. Sam Lungu, and his nickname is 21st Century Education. <laughs> He's a gentleman sitting over there on the gray. <clears throat> so you've heard him being described as a chief academic officer. So that's a new position that we created here in the Rhodes Park Schools Group, where his responsibility is to look at the overall uh, academic functions that happen, the teaching and learning, the pastoral care, everything that happens towards the services that we provide uh, to, the, to, the, to the customers. I want to send everybody who's here off, you know, into the next few weeks of exams. It's going to be a little bit intense. It's going to be a little bit interesting. You're going to hear a lot of advice. Uh, you've heard some wonderful advice, of course, today from our head teacher, Mrs. Yawanta. And I want all of you to, to have a good time during exams. Be good to yourselves and look forward to what's to come. And we look forward to seeing you one day as parents, right? As you graduate your own children. All the best. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Mr. Folotia, for those uh, kind words of encouragement to our graduating students. So before we allow our guest of honor to make his speech, I'll allow our PTA chairperson to come and represent our parents and give his speech on behalf of all the parents that are sitting at home. A round of applause for Mr. Saini. Good afternoon. Uh, honors guests, ladies, gentlemen, and of course, the graduating class um, of 2020. Uh, that's why we are here. Indeed, it's a great, great pleasure uh, to be here this afternoon uh, to celebrate and share a message uh, with you, um, even for a short time. You see, educating uh, children has always been an important uh, aspect of preparing uh, children to uh, inherit the world. And this is the work that this great school, uh, the Rhodes Park School, has been contributing uh, both to the families and uh, to the nation at large. And the work of the PTA, um, to a large extent, really is to work as a close partner of the school to support its education goals. And as you are aware, the aim of Rhodes Park School is to nurture the whole child aspect of development. And Rhodes Park School has lived uh, consistently up to its ideal. And therefore, uh, I take this opportunity um, to appreciate God, the Almighty, the proprietors, the parents, teachers, and students of this uh, great school towards for the contributions made 
towards moral, spiritual, academic upliftment of the school. Let me quickly go to our graduating students, just a piece of advice. To you, our dear young ladies and gentlemen before us, uh, the graduating class of 2020, we are immeasurably proud of you and your achievement. There are those of you who seemed to have wings and you just soared over all the obstacles and challenges that came uh, across your path. And yet, there are those of you who may have had challenges you know, soaring through these obstacles, but the most important thing is that each and every one of you has arrived at your destination, and this is what is important. So you've all got here, and you have achieved this great, great stride. It's very, very important in your lives. So because you were consistent and focused on your goal, I can only applaud you uh, for this hard work, determination, and purposive resolve to achieve this uh, milestone in your lives. You seize the opportunities, academic, cultural, sport, different aspects, uh, until, this, um, uh, until the end of the journey. Indeed, we are, we are proud of you. Now, this ship, uh, I'll be referring to a ship. A ship basically means your life. So the ship you're about to board now, I think you can now listen carefully because it's important. It, it may either be a luxurious ship or it can be a working vessel. It may bring you just to the coast or it can take you to the other continents. You may face storms or it, it may be a calm ride. You may also choose your particular destination or the wind will take you there. Now, on this ship called life, you will find friends. Some of them, uh, you will share the hopes. Others have their own agenda. But, and each and every one of those will influence you in a different way. And today, I want to encourage you to be choosy on your friends because this is very, very important. Now you either have freedom or freedom. It's your choice. Now, so don't judge other people harshly, but try to choose wisely uh, the people who will be good to you and who will offer you good advice, you need to pull each other up. And speaking of friends, you will be leaving your friends. You've been with them for a very, very long time. You've been playing together, the Rosberg family. But it's always important as you part company, you continue getting in touch. And <clears throat> yeah, because of course you will have new friends, but they cannot replace that bond that you've, you've, you've nurtured together. Now, some of you, just a little attention, some of you will rush to board this ship called life. Some of you will take your time. Some of you will take a lot of baggage, and yet others will just travel lightly. But... It's always important to notice that those who have encouraged you, your parents, as uh, Mr. Frosia was saying, um, are proud of you for this uh, important achievement. This is not the end of education. It may actually be the beginning of real education. So from here, you will go to different institutions, 
So it's very, very important to remain focused. Education doesn't end here. Now, you have to bring to the world the knowledge, this knowledge that you have acquired, but also you don't have to come to the world as a glass which is full. You have to come to the world with a glass which is half full so that you should be willing to take in and be able to learn something as you move on. But you should always make a decision right now to always make a difference in your lives. The difference in the world, however little it is, it's very, very important. Take time to enjoy the beauties of nature. Take care of them, because without water, without the air, and you, uh, this world, this planet cannot survive. Enjoy the trip. Go on the journey armed with enthusiasm and curiosity. Open your hearts to your fellow passengers in the ship. They will surely open their arms for you, and they will always be there for you because we all need each other. Finally, let this opportunity, I, I take this opportunity to congratulate the Rhodes Park School graduating class of 2020 and wish you all the very best. Please, go and make a difference in your lives, your families, your communities, the nation, and the world at large by flying to new heights in the years to come. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Saini. Um, that's our PTA chairperson representing our parents watching us from home. And now we move on to our next item. Uh, before Mr. Saini came up, I was about to introduce our guest of honor. So I was saying our guest of honor, Mr. Sianyabo, is a former Rhodes Park School pupil. So he's a product of Rhodes Park School, a product of the gallant teachers of Rhodes Park School, and we are hoping he can be a motivation to those of you who are about to leave so that in the next few years we can see one of you coming to grace one of these occasions to encourage your little ones that are coming behind you. Now, Mr. Saini, uh, Mr. Sianyabo, I beg your pardon, is a lawyer and he runs his own firm. We will allow him to give his speech as we are informed he's rushing back to chambers. So, Mr. Sianyabo, please come forward. A round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, the managing director, the PTA chairman, the head of school, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Rose Park School for remembering me after many years. I was last here 18 years ago as a, as a pupil. So instead of 2020, it should have read 2002. That's the last time I was here. So I'm, I'm, I'm greatly honored to be your guest of honor. And the advice I'll give you is probably different from everyone because I sat on the same desk you sat. I was even taught by the same teachers that taught you. I was taught by Mr. Katema from grade 8 up to grade 12. <laughs> the starting point, first of all, is that I think the question should be, why am I here? I mean, so many people have passed through Rhodes Park, and I think they've scored successes. So I'm exceedingly humbled that I'm here before you to just explain one or two things about life. I came to Rhodes Park in 1998 through a scholarship. The Folotia Memorial Scholarship, I was the first recipient of the Folotia Memorial Scholarship. I was 13 years then. <laughs> uh, I was top of my class throughout, from grade 8 to grade 12. I had all awards. Think of science best in class, best the whole grade, best every subject. The only award I never got was the award for the most improved. <laughs> and I regret that. I also tell you that I was also the first person to get six points at Rose Park School in 2002. After that, well, it did end there. I went to university, also on a bursary, which is like a scholarship. Before I finished my fourth year, I was approached and given 
sponsorship. Basically, the International Justice Mission approached me if I could work for them. So I had a job before I actually graduated. And I had a 100% scholarship for my bar exams. I didn't pay for anything, including my passport size photos. I graduated and worked for the International Justice Mission. I worked in private practice as a commercial litigation lawyer, a defense lawyer, a prosecutor, until I finally joined the National Assembly, which is the legislative arm of government. I'm now the deputy parliamentary legal counsel, and basically the second in command and legal advisor to the speaker, members of parliament, and management of the National Assembly. That, that is where I am. I'm actually, I hope I still have a job because I need to rush to the chamber after speaking to you so that, you know, the business, parliamentary business can go on. But one interesting thing that I need to tell you is, first of all, I was with so many people when we were in school. I will tell you something. Out of all the friends you have, you probably remain with only one friend. And I deliberately invited Ntale Chanda, who is still a friend of mine since 1998. We've been friends since then. I don't know where the rest are. And I'll tell you, where are the cool kids, you ask? Some have overdosed on drugs. Others have committed suicide. But they were the cool kids, so-called the cool kids. So one lesson is you're not a cool kid until you get six points. I'm just joking. You're not a cool kid unless you do very well. But six points will probably be a good thing. I had distinctions only, by the way. And let me tell you why where you are is very important doesn't matter if you have a PhD or a professor. Wherever you work, whatever you do, they always ask for a grade 12 certificate. That's how important where you are is. So you make or break right now. There are certain things you can't amend. So I'm hoping, I wish I could have spoken to you earlier, but it's not too late. You still have a lot to do between now and when you write your exams. But the most interesting thing is really the lesson about life. The starting point is, yes, I'm a lawyer, I did the academics, but it's also other aspects about your life. Firstly, mind your company. Mind your company. Be around people that build you. It doesn't matter how long you've known them. Secondly, work hard. It may not be in academics, it can be in other things. But the biggest challenge you ever have in life is to find your purpose. You need to find your purpose, and that's the biggest thing. Most people are 40, 50, they don't even know why they are alive. The point is, you need to figure out early on in life exactly what your purpose on earth is. I would summarize my purpose in three things. Firstly, I'm a lawyer. Yes, that is my trade. Secondly, I'm a farmer. That's my purpose. I'm proud to tell Mr. Katema that the agricultural science I learned actually did amount to something. I would like to invite him to come to any of my five farms and see what I'm doing. So that's my passion. But passion is not enough. You will not make it because you're passionate about something. The passion also has to earn you money. When you choose a career, choose a passion, always remember, first, save humanity. Secondly, save yourself. Be the best version of who you can be. And for the great 12s, don't worry about what you're going to be. Just make sure you do well in every subject. And after that, you can choose to be whatever you want. That is the challenge to each one of us. I was, I think, an, a well-rounded uh, student, so to speak. I was good at mathematics just as much as I was good at history. There is no limit as to how much you can achieve. I always argued with lecturers where my 2% went when I had 98. The count of whether I had succeeded was how many 100% do I have after the term has ended. Colleagues of mine used to run for second position because first position was already taken. And I will tell you something else. Through life, you will fail. I guarantee you, you will fail. You will try and you will fail. But the most important thing is, you should keep trying. For as long as you are alive, you are here for a purpose. So the cool kids have a challenge for you. You are not cool until you get six points. And 10 years later, I think it's 18 years since I left this place, you need to account for how you've lived your life. And by the way, this is, I know most parents may not agree. Stay away from alcohol. It slows you down. Stay away from alcohol. It will slow you down. It will damage you, and you won't get anywhere. I always think alcohol wastes your time because, firstly, you're drinking, and secondly, you have a hangover to deal with. That's two days lost out of your life. You'll never get it back. 
You will be different things here. You'll be a lawyer. You may just also just be a farmer or follow your passion. I talked about the third thing. The third thing is that I'm actually a teacher. My teachers will be proud of this. My passion has always been teaching. So I tutor by exam students and undergraduates in law. But also, I'm a student of life. So I read everything, nutrition, science. I can actually teach physics to a grade 10 class so many years after I left. Because you have to learn to know the world, how it functions, and make money while you're doing it. I've emphasized the make money. Because uh, even if you have a passion, you need to, to make sure you do what you want. And unfortunately, you will need money for you to do what you want. You can take off and travel the world if you want. Yes, the options are available. And all of us know being broke sucks. Now, downside again. Your parents will not give you as much money as they give you now. So if you thought this pampering will continue, wait until you are done and you are home. They have no incentive. To, now you'll be on your own. You begin to grow. So this phase is very important. Most of you have to adjust, and it will not be easy. So look into yourselves. Check what your talent is. But as, 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 as advice about what you should do, look for what you do effortlessly. Don't choose it. I didn't become a lawyer because there's a myth that lawyers make money. No. I was very good at debate, by the way. I did a lot of debate when we were here. I won quite a number of awards. I love being a lawyer. I'm a lawyer because I could have been anything else, and I chose to be a lawyer. But you only get that freedom when you have found yourself and who you are. I wish I could say more, but I'll just end by telling you to say, get these exams by the horn. And if it's more choice questions and you're not sure of which one, C is usually the answer. <laughs> but don't take my word for it. So. In 2005, by the way, I thought I should share this uh, uh, without, without really wasting much of your time. In 2005, when I was in second year, I think I was in law school, I visited Luyando. Where is Luyando? Luyando. By the way, he's my nephew. His mother is my sister. And my brother-in-law gave him a challenge, or rather gave me a challenge. He said, but then he was just born, so he was quite young. I think he was a baby by then. He said... He was hoping that his son would grow up to be just like me. And I was exceedingly humbled that he could do that. So the standards for him are quite high, <laughs> as you can imagine. So please work hard. Obey the law. Obey your parents. Obey the laws of nature. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Council Sianyabo. Another round of applause, boys and girls. How many of us can say we're inspired by Council? How many of us will be reaching out to him for advice? Our farmers, our lawyers, our teachers to be. All right, thank you very much, sir. As we continue with our program, is Taonga here? Are you ready? All right, Taonga, please walk down. Now, as you may know, Rhodes Park School has aimed to deliver holistic education. Um, and fortunately, this year, because of the COVID wave, we couldn't have our school concert. But we are glad that most of you here gladly participated in our school concert last year, and you will have no regrets. Taonga, ladies and gentlemen, our high table is one of our learners that's very talented and he's going to grace us with a song. Don't play with it, don't be the sun. Still not understanding this logic. I'm back and I'm better. I want you bad as ever. Don't let me just let up. I want to give you better. Right. Left hand is steering, the other is gripping your light up 
of applause, please. He's doing it behind my back. So previously, um, Ms. Smiley did mention some of the people that have helped us to put this event together. Uh, one of them being Liquid Telecom. So as you know, remote learning has not been easy. And right now, uh, Liquid Telecom is doing a lot to help us as a school to ensure that we deliver our service to you, our pupils. And not only that, Liquid Telecom have decided to award the best student in information and communication technology. That student is among us, boys and girls. The other uh, award to be given out is the best overall performing student in the class of 2020. That student is among us. So we now call upon the representative from Liquid Telecom to come and share a few words before we call upon these two wonderful students who have stood out from the rest. A round of applause. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. It's only, it's, it's only us that can provide you with the best internet service in Zambia, but we are here to just help you get connected. As Liquid today, we'd like to honor the best people that perform to their, abilities, to their, to their own abilities. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations again. Thank you so much. So we call upon the guest of honor to come and assist to help us give out these wonderful awards. So the award for the best student in information and communication technology goes to Vamsi Kanteti. A round of applause for Vamsi. We hope you will ride those guys. Congratulations, Vamsi. And I'm sure for the next award, you definitely agree with me that this student has been all round. All round, starting from as far back as grade eight. So the next award is the best overall performing student in the class of 2020. And it goes to? It goes to? Awesome. Awesome things. This award goes to none other than Chisenga Isofu.
Well done, girl. Well done. Keep it up. We just hope and pray that you will continue with your enthusiasm. Boys and girls, we will quickly move on to the awarding of certificates. May I take this opportunity to call upon our managing director, our chief academic officer, the PTA chairperson, and our head teacher to come forward as we award certificates to our class of 2020. We will begin with Filmon Mebratu. Musaka Nyaka Kokota, Vamsi Kanteti, Edna Mbewe, Ap Yash Mystery, Apuva Menon, in the order that you're called. So Vamsi, Edna, Apuva, and Yash. Sequila Mumba, Diana Mujona, Moko Kamwewa, Asta Pawa, in the order that you're called. So Diana, Mokoka, and then Asta, Pula Piri, Tapea Piri. Kavamba Shibemba, Adrian Silubonde, Rishita Tawani, Arushi Vashishta, and Munif Yusuf Mohammed. Moving on to the green class of 2020, Esther Amukwaya, Mapa Lobwalia, Mwiza Chambika, Emmanuel Chika, Luyando Chirwa, Anthony Likai, Tichagarika Manjese, Luyando Masole, Perry Mutale, Rebecca Nalwembe, Nomsan Lovu, Msenge Ngandwe, Ashley Navete, Tevin Nyondo, Nomsa Msenge, Nomsa Msenge, And then Ashley, Tevin, Emmanuel Nyoni, Wilson Sikanyika, Emmanuel Silungwe, and Lynn Zulu. We now move on to the next class, and this is 12 grade. Setumo Akapelwa, Sungwe Boa. Let us hurry quickly. Robert Mutembo Chansa, Lumuno Zengela Chelemu, Sandala Poch Talimine, Kizito Allen's Tomfwa. Chianda Guaba, Cholwe Hangandu, Waza David Hara, John Rose Hemedy, Mario Maguya Jere, Kabandula Kachinda, Joseph Kafwariman, 
Frank Kaoma, Wana Sambondu Kema, Wonga Lungu, Kubo Mono, Chikwanda Mumbi, Twiza Nankolongo, Christopher Glovu, Taonga Isaac Ngambi, Chanda Ngosa, Wetu Audrey Ngolube, Chewe Ngamba, Matthew Tanatwa Patwani, Lusekelo Atusaye Salanga, Nata Isia Sendwa, Waluse Shambuluma, Kapembwa Jerry Stula, Mayamiko Siwela, Tyrone Zimba. Waluse, followed by Kapembwa, then Mayamiko, and lastly, Tyrone Zimba. The next class, 12 yellow, Joseph Amofa Sekai, Dylan Barry, Dylan Barry, Mohau Jonathan Benzo, Bright Junior Wumba, Luyando Chilufia, Tayamika Kondwani Chimboni, Mapalonsa Machpoma, Leah Johannes Gaitani, Chibusa Wandi Kaluba, Oswell Katota, Mulomba Patricia Luisha, Taonga Makashini, Makungu Asante Makungu, Mainga Malundu, Sepomwaka Mubita, Kasonde Molenga, Queen Chishimba Mulopoto, Natasha Mopela, Latasha Mutelekesha, Temwani Gwira, Chisenga Malumbo Msofu, Chigozie Onwoka, Onwoka, pardon me, Tando Yengani Popiri, Selvan Rajamona, Kondwani Jeremiah Sakala, Lukundo Jackson Singoi, and Patson Chimukwindi Ziambo. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for ensuring that we follow the proper order of doing things. We can now ask the high table to take their seats. Thank you so much. So each class, each class had to pick a representative to share their thoughts. So we are going to begin with 12 Blue. 12 Blue, can you come and give us our speech? Let us clap for the representative for 12 Blue. Guest of honor, managing director, esteemed heads of school, teachers, dear parents watching online, beloved batchmates, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great honor and gratitude that I stand here before you, graduates of COVID-19, heads of school, teachers, parents, and audience at large. Can you believe it? I mean, look at us. We look like a bunch of Harry Potter in these robes. 
Anyways, I request for you to pay attention to this speech as I present because my dear children, I have some wise words for you. One of the greatest gifts you can give yourself right here, right now, in this single solitary monumental moment in your life is to decide without apology to commit to the journey and not to the outcome. It is a great honor and privilege for me to be standing here in front of you on behalf of my class to express the happiness we feel in our hearts today. They say, people only remember the first and forget the rest. I believe these years have been a journey from which we will all take many memories with us. We don't need an award or a medal just to prove that we have something special within us. All of us. All of us are blessed with talents and are worth congratulating. This is what this day is all about. How many times have we imagined what this day would be like? I have to say, I have thought about this day so many times. I could have memorized every imagined scene, but not even the best of my imagined scenes could have compared to the reality I'm greeted with. Now that we have passed our high school challenges, it's time for us to move on to an even bigger fight, university. The lessons we have learned in class surely help us get through that next stage, but we also need to remember that all these isomers, formulas, quadratic equations, and poems, everything we have memorized, they're not the only things that will help us through. Gaining the courage to stand in front of the class when we can barely speak to the person next to us, having the dedication to complete all Mr. Chewie's mathematics homeworks, and when, we, when the only thing we actually know is that we have to solve it. These are some of the things that we need, that we have learned about ourselves that go beyond our textbooks. Those are the things we would need, not only in university, but even after that. Mr. Chewie, I would like to appreciate your continuous efforts to bring, bringing our class this far. At this point, I would also like to thank all our subject teachers for guiding us through these years. And there's one more thing I will remember, learning to appreciate others. Remember that we cannot stand on our own, whether it's assembly presentation or a graduation performance. Our parents, friends, teachers, heads of school, even the lady who serves us our lunch, all of them. Each and every one of them have played a vital role in helping us where we are now. Hey. Let's not forget TikTok for keeping us sane in this pandemic. <laughs> for all those blessings, I, along with the entire class of 2020, 12 Blue, are sincerely gra grateful to all of you once again. Congratulations. We deserve a one huge round of applause. Thank you. Greetings to the guest of honor. PTA Chairman, Managing Director, Head Teacher, Deputy Head of Secondary, Deputy Head of Primary, Teachers, and my fellow students. My name is Musenge Ngandwe. I am honored to be standing in front of all of you to commemorate the memories and accomplishments of our great class, 12 Green, as well as the rest, of course. Can you believe it? Four years ago, most of us walked into these halls as nervous as we were the first day of school. We were the freshmen, the low men of the Totain Poor. Now, we are leaving the school behind to a whole new group of people, most of whom are just as nervous as we were when we arrived. It has been a long four years and short four years. Long because of all the drama, bad homework, the boring readings, early morning studying, and all other things that hit us in high school. Short because of the lifelong friendships, lasting memories, and truly interesting and amazing things we learned between the occasional bits of drudgery. To quote the Irish author, James Joyce, better pass boldly into the other world in the full glory of some passion than fade and wither dismally with age. I believe we as a class have exemplified this statement. Through these past years, 
I have seen us all discover and devote ourselves to our passions and grow immensely as a result. In our midst, we have economists, engineers, musicians, basketballers, doctors, and so much more to be. I remember the days when the basketball team, which mostly consisted of pupils of 12 green, trained till 6 p.m. trying to perfect their talents in that court you see right there. Unfortunately, you can't see it now, but you'll see it later. Most of you have asked yourself this question. What's next? I will be going to college or university, as well as many of my classmates. Most of us may get right to work or even take a year or more off to decide what they want to do. Leaving high school behind is a brutal transition that I do not know what the world has in store for any of us. I do know how I will deal with these events by using the skills and information I have picked up here. Take those experiences with you. Keep close to the student and teacher friends such as Mr. Chela, Mr. Simwinga, Mr. Mumba. Mm, yes. You have made at Rhodes Park School. And do well wherever you go and in whatever you do. Always remember, there is no end. There is no beginning. There is only the passion of life. Congratulations again to each of you, and may you all succeed in the years ahead. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, um, everyone here. Uh, I'd like to start by welcoming members of the high table. I'd also like to thank the leadership of the school for giving me this um, opportunity to share what I have to share to these very beautiful and very handsome people here today. Um, so firstly, I'd like to start by sharing something I learned yesterday as I was running around um, trying to finish out, trying to finish, you know, getting things for my outfit. And I was with my big brother and I remember he was telling me that it's easy to look ordinary. I mean, uh, he came and he talked to me and we were inside the car and he said, I want you to look at the road right now. How many Corollas do you see in the road? And I saw, I don't know, like 20 something. And he looked at me again and he said, I want you to look at how many Mercedes Benz cars are in the road. And I could count very few. To be honest, I could only count one. And he came and he, and he was telling me that I shouldn't settle to be ordinary because each and every one of us have got potential to do, you know, exceedingly and, you know, better than anything that we could ever ask, think, or imagine. Honestly speaking, I'm honestly curious of what the future holds, but, you know, I'm very, very glad and I'm very, very happy knowing that even, even as I go into the future, I'm going to let passion be my guide. Because with passion, you're able to do anything you want. I mean, you look at um, all these footballers. You can look at Cristiano Ronaldo, Joseph Kafari. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can look at famous singers like Bruno Mars, Tonga Makeshi. Sorry. 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 <laughs> you can look at amazing basketball players like LeBron James and Anthony Lekai. And you can look at um, a future billionaire or the current billionaire such as Bill Gates and Tanato Paswani. I guarantee you, if you let passion be your guide, you, you, you will honestly shock yourself. Because if you love what you're doing, you will do it to your fullest. I remember seeing these Disney shows and I'll see people, 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 decorating their class halls and, you know, putting chocolates inside, spending large amounts of cash, things, you know. These are things that they wouldn't do for just any ordinary person, but they'll do it because they love someone or they love something about the person. So because they are passionate about what they love, they are able to do amazing things. And I'm telling you, if you love, 
what you want to do in the future, if you want to be a basketball player, if you want to be a future musician, if you want to be a soccer player, then you should use passion to be your guide. Because if you use passion, you'll be able to get that talent of yours, you'll be able to get a chocolate, you'll be able to buy a Bugatti, and you'll honestly be your passion's blesser. So I thank you, ladies and gents, for giving me this opportunity to speak in front of you. You all look very lovely, and I want to say wish you all the best. I know I'm going to forget most of you, I won't lie, but um, I'm really, 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 really glad that even as I forget, I will remember you the moment I see you on TV. And I guarantee you, teachers of Rhodes Park, you watch these people, and you watch what they're going to achieve because the whole world will be talking about them and there will be people of positive influence. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to the guest of honor, the PTA chairperson, the managing director, the headmistress, the deputy, head, uh, the deputy head of secondary school, heads of department present, teachers, parents, and my fellow pupils. My name is Tando Piri, and I will be today's representative of 12 Yellow. As the cream of the stream, as they call us, we started us as strangers, but now we're practically a family. Like any family does, we laughed, we cried, we grew, we felt, uh, okay, we felt just a bit here and there. But regardless, we are thankful to the school for giving us this opportunity to meet, learn, and become the family that we are today. On behalf of the class, I would like to thank the teachers for all their efforts, work, sweat, and determination they put in for us in order to make this possible. I guess we have many memories to carry on, but one, we, one thing or one statement that we shall never forget is, chew your books. Or rather, as the rest of my grade will know, hey, that's how you feel. <laughs> but above all, these statements have pushed us to do our academic best. To our wonderful parents who made all of this possible, we thank you for all the love and support you have given us. None of this would be possible without them. To Mr. Chella for helping us make our transition from lower secondary school to high school. We thank you for teaching us not to open Pandora's box. To our co-class teacher, Mr. Banda, we thank you for the patience you exerted while dealing with our class and also helping us catch up while dealing with our somewhat notorious nature. We could, not, we could not be where we are without your tireless efforts. To Ms. Katema, who was always there to save our skin in times of need. To Mrs. Mwene, our literature teacher, thank you for teaching us how to fight the battles of life. And last, but, not, but certainly not the least, to our core class teacher, oh, pardon me, to our main teacher, mother, and caretaker, as well as biggest supporter, Twelve Yellow would like to give a special thank you and shout out to Mrs. Lillian Chiwele. You enabled me as well as you enabled me as well as everyone else present to be able to take on the academic world and conquer it. We do not know what adventures the future holds for us, but we're most certainly sure that the adventures that we have that we have had, pardon me at Rhodes Park was some of the best times of our lives. Within the shortest of moments, we came from toddling in reception and the early year center to standing before you as society's newest high school graduates. We started high school with a local epidemic in the form of, of cholera and are ending it with a global pandemic in the form of COVID-19. Yet, here we are. When it seemed like all might be lost and all the odds were against us, we climbed the highest of mountains and still prevailed. So, thank you to everyone who made this possible, and congratulations to the class of 2020. So, thank you so much for those wonderful speeches. Each one of you, I'm sure, made a contribution to those rich speeches that have been shared. Boys and girls, pick one or two things from what has been shared here, and you definitely go higher. At this point in time, 
would like to have a nice wrap up from our head girl to give us a vote of thanks. Our dear head girl Chisengan Sofu, let's give her another round of applause, please. To the guests of honor, the PTA chairperson, the managing director, the headmistress, the deputy head of secondary school, heads of department present, invited guests, teachers, and my fellow pupils, I say good afternoon. My name is Chisengan Sofu, and I have served as school head girl for the past year. Like most of you seated here, I was born and bred, well, academically speaking, that is, at Rhodes Park School. Having started my academic journey in Reception 6 at the Joseph Miller campus and will end it, well, only briefly, on 30th December as a member of 12 Yellow. I never knew that I would be here standing before you giving this speech because at times, things felt almost impossible for me. As we prepare to go our separate ways, I would like to leave you all with three lessons I've learned throughout my high school journey. The first one is to be grateful. Let's face it, we all know that after we write our last paper, most of us will not see each other again. And once that reality hits, you realize that you should have stopped and smelled the flowers. All of us emphasize how ready we were to leave school and move on to bigger and better things. But the truth is, those were the years. These are the years, and this is the year we're never going to get back, and memories we won't experience again. The next lesson is to never let anyone else define you. No one has authority in your life to tell you what you can and cannot do. Nobody knows what the future holds for you and who you may influence along the way. Every single one of us is unique and that means that we'll take on different paths, lifestyles and obstacles to reach success. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter how long it takes or what order you do it in, as long as you get it done for yourself. Yes, you're going to have failures along the way, but they just point you in a new direction to accomplish your goals. Your next job in life is to figure out what you like and what your calling may be. It's nice to have someone on your team, but the most important thing you can do for yourself is be your own cheerleader. Encourage yourself and give yourself motivation to keep pushing forward, even if the world may seem against you. Oprah Winfrey once said, and I quote, surround yourself with only people who are going to lift you higher, end of quote. And I'm happy to say that I found those very people during my journey. I can only hope that these people will always be in my life. If not, I hope to find adequate placeholders. I'm sure most of you would remember the highs and lows we've had, ranging from the burden of homework and tests, dodging Mr. Katema, who seems to always be on our backs, trying to explain yourself to Mr. Kafariman when caught red-handed misbehaving, the noisy classmates, class clowns like Lukunda and Sylvan, and somewhat harsh but loving teachers are what make high school high school. All the memories you have made together will be a reminder of this bittersweet journey. There has never been and will never be an easy path without obstacles to achieve your dreams and goals. However, don't worry or fret about those obstacles. Embrace them. Dive into them headfirst because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. The end of high school is only the beginning of something greater. I can only hope and pray that each one of us eventually makes it to where they want to be in life. I thank you all. Thank you so much, our dear head girl. But I heard her mention the fact that they were dodging Mr. Katema. And there's no way we are going to allow you leave without Mr. Katema saying something. Mr. Katema, it's your time. May I start by recognizing the presence of uh, our guest of honor, though he is not here, Mr. Sianyabo, our managing director, Mr. Folotia, the PTA chairperson, Mr. Saini, the head teacher, Mrs. Siawanta, the two deputies, Mr. Luando and Mr. Gawela, and the heads of department, fellow teachers, and you graduates, good afternoon. May I start by thanking our Lord Almighty for this opportunity of standing in front of you this time. Taking care of you 
from grade eight up to now was not easy. But I start proud of you today. Even if you are saying you are dodging me, but it was a good job, and a good job that was well done. That's why you are here today. I've seen you grow from the time you came in in grade eight. Physically, you have changed. I've also changed. Four years ago, I had black hair and a black beard. Now my hair is turning white, and my beard is white. That's why I call myself grandfather, your grandfather. So it's nice to see you change physically, socially, and academically you have changed and ready to go into the world. It makes me appreciate the trust the school had in me, the trust your parents had in me and yourselves to take care of you from grade eight up until now. I'm grateful for this. I've worked with the teachers and you for the past four years, and I'm happy to see you get excited. My speech is short. May I conclude by encouraging you to tell you that all is well that ends well. It does not matter how we started. It does not matter if we failed along the way. But what matters is how we are going to end our journey. We know that the final exams are coming. So we need to re prepare for these exams. So this should remind you that you are coming to the end of your five-year journey, to the end. Like I've said, all is well that ends well. You have failed, if you have failed 10 times, then it matter if some people have been getting distinctions and have get, been getting all the awards along the way. But what matters is how you finish. When you finish, you have six points. Even if you have failed before, your six points will not be black. The six points of the one who has been collecting awards along the way will not be blue. It's the same six points. And you can achieve what you are dreaming of. So you need to work hard so that you arrive at that destination safe and well. That good ending will please you yourselves, will please your parents, and will please the teachers and the school administration. And that will be a good ending. And that will be a cause for a bigger celebration, bigger than this. So I wish you well in your journey and end it very well. Thank you very much. I think our grandfather deserves another round of applause, don't you think? <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Akatema. Thank you very much to all our class representatives. We have sadly come to the end of our program, boys and girls. Um, I know. But before we go, as per tradition, since our parents are watching us from home, uh, to recognize the effort that they have put in, I will ask all of our graduates to stand up. We're going to stand, salute, and give our parents, our guardians, a loud round of applause so that they can hear us from home, they can watch us from home for a good two minutes. We begin now. This is to say thank you to our parents for bringing us this far. To say thank you for not giving up on us. To say thank you for supporting us even when we are difficult. To say thank you for buying us our expensive outfits for our photos. To say thank you for sponsoring that lunch that, um, that we are going to have after this that nobody else should know about. <laughs> This is to say thank you for trusting Rhodes Park School. Thank you very much, boys and girls. May we take our seats? Thank you. All right, we would like to appreciate in absentia our guest of honor, our managing director, for always ensuring that we get the best of education for the children and for the teachers to ensure that we enjoy our teaching here. Our chief academic uh, officer for being here with us, our PTA chairperson, Mr. Saini, for staying with us this long, Mrs. Siawanta, uh, and our deputy heads for being here with us. Not forgetting our gallant teachers who continue to be with us throughout. As we end, may we bow in a word of prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we are grateful for this day. We're grateful for the gift of life. 
We're grateful, mighty Father, for the gift of this fellowship that we've had. Mighty Father, we believe that every good and perfect gift comes from above. We thank you, Almighty Father, for these gifts that you have given to us, Almighty God. We thank you, Almighty Father, for blessing us with them. We thank you for the joy that they bring to us. We thank you, Almighty Father, that you have given us the grace, Almighty God, to impart the knowledge that we have been imparting for the years that they've been with us. And now, Almighty Father, as they close, as they prepare to end this journey at Rhodes Park School, we pray that may you continue to guide us with wisdom, may you lead their paths, Almighty God, that they might look back at this journey and say this is a journey that you had been with them through. We pray now as we close, Almighty Father, thanking you for the peace that we have uh, enjoyed, for the joy, Almighty Father, that we have enjoyed, Almighty God, in this place. We pray, Almighty Father, that you may continue to bind us with cords of love, with cords of unity, O God, that you may protect each and every one of our children as they continue with their day, that this day may end, Almighty Father, that we may be glad, Almighty God, and continue to rejoice in it. We thank you for being God. We thank you that you are good. And now we disperse each and every one of us, Almighty Father, with your love, with your care, and with all glory and honor being returned unto you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Thank you very much, boys and girls. This has been Miss Mwale and Mrs. Shengamo. We thank Liquid Telecom for being with us. We thank Cavendish University and Apex University and each one of you. We will see you when we see you. Thank you.